So, Joyce fans, <laughs> um, then there's Paul Manafort, who uh, n now we know was just completely dealing. Uh, and tell us about that angle. I mean, this was way back before Trump even became president. This, Ma this Manafort, who, who is one of you know, several who went to jail, uh, paying the price. But we're learning so much more about exactly how deep into this he was. It's just another piece in this puzzle of lies that we've been talking about this morning, Mika. We've always known a lot of the, the information around Paul Manafort, that he had debts worth millions of dollars to Russian oligarchs, that he was working with a man named Konstantin Kalimnik, who was widely believed to be affiliated with the GRU. The Senate subcommittee actually goes a little bit further and, and actually identifies him as someone who was working with Russian intelligence. And so what we see here is just this patina of lie upon lie upon lie being told by desperate people close to the president. And, and folks don't go in front of a Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and commit lies under oath unless they have something to hide up. That's, I think, the, the big picture, the forest that we need to take away as we read this new report in conjunction with the Mueller report. There were so many lies that were told on so many different subjects, and people don't subject themselves to the risk of perjury unless the truth is so bad that if the truth comes out, it will destroy everything. That's why Paul Manafort matters here. He's that first piece of connection to Russia. It's out of his relationships that this Ukraine story, the fake Ukraine story, is put into circulation by some of the folks that he was involved with on the Russian side. And that's disinformation straight from Moscow that the president, among other people, picks up and starts to, to um, put into pub public circulation here. So the Trump folks, the Trump camp has all too often called perjury a process crime. Oh, these obstruction of justice crimes, they don't really matter. They're just process crimes. But what they are here is really the most important piece that we need to keep our eye on, because the lying is hiding up something. The Senate, I think, has now told us very clearly what it is that they were so desperate to hide up. And of course, we know that the president himself lied. I, I remember when we were told that the president wouldn't sit for an in-person interview with Bob Mueller because everybody knew he couldn't sit for that interview without committing perjury. So he submitted written answers that were very carefully crafted by his lawyers. Now the Republicans in the Senate have told us that even in that carefully controlled process, this president committed perjury. Joe, I'm, I'm from a little bit north of the Redneck Riviera, where you're from, but I know perjury when I see it, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, May as I, as I said, sure. Uh, so, you know, you and, and, and uh, Senator McCaskill, I think in honor of your point earlier, we should all start calling this the Rubio Report. And I just want to foot stomp mm -hmm. a point that Joyce made about the Rubio Report, which is, you know, one of the central issues that it identifies is that the president's campaign chairman had a long term business relationship throughout, the, including throughout the campaign, in which he is feeding him internal uh, campaign polling and information who is a Russian intelligence officer. That is the fundamental claim of the first section. Uh, of this report. And Konstantin Kalimnik, yes, he shows up in a significant way in the Mueller report. But as Joyce notes, Mueller does, stops just short of saying he is actually a GRU intelligence officer, sort of describes him as having been somebody the FBI assesses as having intelligence ties in Russia. The Rubio report identifies him as a Russian intelligence officer and describes a long pattern of business dealings that Manafort has with him, including confidential campaign information running right through the period of the campaign. And so, you know, rather than getting focused on the question of, you know, collusion, no collusion, that's that, just ask yourself the question that the Rubio report asks, which is, is that safe from a counterintelligence perspective? Is it a okay thing for a candidate for president to have as a campaign manager somebody with an ongoing business relationship 
with an officer of Russian intelligence. And feeding that officer of Russian intelligence, pulling information from Midwest states and other information that the Russians could use in targeting their misinformation mm -hmm. campaigns to help Donald Trump get elected president. Um, you know, what's what's interesting here and there's so much interesting here. Uh, you could talk about we could talk about uh, the meeting at Trump Tower uh, where links between the Kremlin and uh, one of the lawyers were, quote, far more extensive and concerning than had been uh, publicly known. That was with Don Jr. and Jared Kushner and Manafort all meeting in the office to get, quote, dirt on Hillary Clinton. What, what, I, forget, I forget the exact words that Don Jr. said. That's awesome, dude, or something oh. along those lines. If what you say is true, I love it. Uh, sounds like an Arby's commercial. Um, uh, but um, <laughs> what I find uh, so interesting, Claire McCaskill, is that the Rubio Cotton report came to the same conclusion as the Mueller report. And you can read the reports. I'm not being ugly when I say this. They come to the same conclusion that the only reason there wasn't a great conspiracy was because uh, Trump's campaign team was too stupid to pull it off. Let me find let me see if I can find the exact language here. Um, Da, 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 da. Oh, well, here we go. The two sides shared the same objective. This is a Washington Post reporting on the report. Uh, the defeat of the Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton and basked in one another's admiration, but more because of ineptitude than any principled commitment to the sanctity of American democracy. The partnership was never consummated, the kid committee determined, which is what Robert Mueller also concluded, that the Trump team was just too stupid to pull this off and the Russians uh, didn't trust them because they were, uh, they were idiots, basically. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.